How do? My name is Andrew Hancock and I am a VMware technical architect from Yorkshire in the United Kingdom. I have worked with VMware since their birth in 1998. So that's been a quarter of a century now. I've been working with the VMware product catalog. Some of my close friends say, if you cut Andy in half, it reads VMware like a stick of rock from Blackpool Pleasure Beach. I have now written over 130 articles and recorded over 30 hours of VMware vSphere 7 and 8 videos for Experts Exchange and received 40 Expert Exchange awards over the last 11 years working with the Expert Exchange community. I am currently the overall number one point earner in the Hall of Fame. I am honoured to have been accepted into the VMware vExpert program since 2011 and I'm currently a VMware vExpert Pro for the last four years. Welcome to Hancock's VMware Half Hour. And welcome back to another video. And in today's video, um, which again is probably going to take about 10, 15 minutes, uh, we'll speed up some of the bits in post or we'll pause and we'll, we'll come back to it. Um, I want to look at a, a piece of software that has been around for a very long time. Um, it started off as something called V2V Converter uh, by Starwind, which was a product originally that just converted a VMDK uh, to a VHD or a VHD to a VMDK, which allowed us to move virtual machines between Hyper-V and VMware. Um, if you look at the release notes, um, this product dates back a very, very long time and it's getting, been getting better. Yes, yeah, so since 2015, they've been doing release notes. But anyway, what interests me more than anything um, at this time um, when people out there are questioning whether to continue using VMware vSphere and um, there have been lots of experts exchange comments on what do I use next as a home lab? What do I use next in my business? Um, I know uh, Philip Elder. Hi there, Phil. Uh, he's a great believer um, in moving to the dark side or he works with the dark side a lot. Let's just say that. Um, so in uh, June this year, um, an email hit my inbox um, and I had a look at it. And one of the things I was really interested to see was it actually stated, if you look in the release notes, release notes here on 11th of April, and I'll put a link uh, to download the software um, in the description as usual. Um, you'll see that it says add, added support for converting live VMs from ESXi to Hyper-V and obviously the vice versa. Um, so I thought, Okay, um, again, it's a free product. Uh, it's not going to cost you any money. Um, download, register, down, they'll register, they'll send you an email with a link and a download, and you can download and install it. So, in today's video, now I have been looking at this product um, since April this year, really, to be honest. So, um, full disclosure, I have actually been experimenting with this product. There are a few bits and pieces about it that personally I don't like. Um, but that's just me because I'm a bit of a geek and I, I go on at you about using FQDNs and um, their product asks us to use IP addresses. Ah, Starwind, can you really in the next release use FQDNs? Um, it would just save me writing IP addresses down on post-it notes. Um, so we'll go through that. So what I'm going to do in this particular video, um, because I must admit, full disclosure again, hand in the air, um, I have had issues converting live VMs from ESXi to Hyper-V and vice versa. Um, and I have actually reached out to Starwind because I really like to uh, basically get this resolved so I can actually basically demonstrate it. But what it can do um, is it can migrate very easily a cold powered off virtual machine from vCenter server ESXi to Hyper-V with no mucking around. Now I know that you can use disk to disk to VHD, but in my opinion, really, it's not really a fully fledged P to V product because all it really does is just basically create an image of the disk for you. Um, unless it's changed, I need to go off and just check that. Um, but it just creates an image, and then you've actually basically got to create the virtual machine specification, add the disk, power it on, etc., etc. Um, this does all the heavy lifting, so effectively 
next, 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 finish. And you've got a lovely shiny Hyper V VM um, that's been migrated um, from VMware vSphere. Um, and if we can sort out the live piece, uh, which again, I have actually sent off an email to contacts at Star Winter to them and say, hey, look, guys, I really want to do a video on this product. I really want to show how brilliant it is. And it's free. Um, so let's chat. OK, so without further ado, um, I'm connected into the dark side. Um, <laughs> I have a, uh, yeah, sorry, guys. I have a Microsoft Hyper-V server. Um, I was um, keeping it hidden. <laughs> so anyway, so we have a Hyper-V server here in the lab. It's based on Windows Server 2022. Um, and um, a couple of tips, you know, I did actually basically find that I was actually having with, um, I was having a permission issue with Starwin V2V. And I think it's basically because um, I'm using non-domain joined workstations, domain join this, domain join that, and I think it was just getting its permissions in, into it. So I've installed Starwin V2V Converter um, or P2V Migrator, whatever you want to call it, um, actually on the Hyper-V server itself. Uh, I did try it from my workstation, but I was getting error message 53 or 58, which I think is a, a, a permission-based issue, so it couldn't actually basically write out the image. So I thought, OK, for this video, let's just basically install it on the uh, on the Hyper-V server. And uh, and I'll put the, um, and let's say it's quite a simple process. Register with Starwind. Um, they'll send you an email. Click the download link and just install it. I'm not going to show you how to actually install it. That's just a waste of time. OK, so we get lots of options, um, lots and lots of options. Let's say this is 9.015, and none that I'm using. And, you know, earlier on, um, I actually took... The Windows 7, if you're watching a previous video about a P2V of a Windows 7 to use in VMware Workstation, um, I use those files on this local workstation and also basically just using this option, it's a local file. Uh, so I basically selected that local file and I was able to convert that into VMware vCenter Server 8.03 and also uh, ESX uh, 8.03 as well. Um, you know, this piece of software really, you know, is you're going to need it in your kit. If you've got a load of VMware or Hyper-V or AWS or Azure or VirtualBox or OREP or Promux tools, then this is going to sit in your toolbox um, because this is just a Swiss Army knife, really, of conversions. Um, you know, just look at them all here. You know, Microsoft Hyper-V, um, Remote ESX or vCenter Server, Azure, AWS, Over, VirtualBox, Promux. You know, it's got them all there. It's got them all there. Anyway, so the location of our image um, is on a um, remote VMware ESXi server or vCenter server. So I'm going to specify the, the IP address. This is the bit I was sort of kind of telling you about, you know, um, can we have FQDNs, please? Um, just because I've got so many IP addresses here in the lab, really, to be honest. I just can't remember them, all the damn things. Um, so... Um, sorry about the keyboard. Um, this is why <laughs> uh, I use my other keyboard, which is my daily driver, because I really, really love it. But it's Bluetooth, and I've got a big issue on this machine at the moment with Bluetooth. So I've had to go back to a wired keyboard and a wired mouse, and I just, just hate them. So I do apologize for the noise. So... IP address of our VMware vCenter server. This is VMware vCenter server 7.0 something 2 um, in the lab here, uh, followed by the administrator vSphere.local and the password. And in the last video, I showed you how to reset that if you've forgotten it, followed by next. So that's going to do a quickie login. Um, I wish really. Um, that if you're actually specifying a vCenter server IP address or FQDN, it would actually just show you all the virtual machines in name order, um, rather than effectively really what it's actually doing, it's showing all our hosts. Um, you know, again, you know, um, maybe I'll send you a, um, a wish list of things that you need to, um, to fix. But anyway, it is a free product. So I'm going to look for a particular... Um, VM called BDR Backup 
and the ones with the little blue dots are off and the ones that got green little tick are on. So effectively, BDR backup, um, CPUs two, memory 4096, FE boot, it's stopped, network adapters one and a virtual disk one. So I'm gonna click next. This is now where you can specify where you actually basically want a V to V it to destination. So you can use another remote uh, ESXi server. So you know, that's a bit like a VMware converter product that effectively can do a migration um, between uh, servers. Um, but of course, VMware Converter does do synchronous. Uh, you can use the synchronized product, but it, mm, which is sort of kind of live. Um, so you've got Microsoft Hyper-V, Azure, AWS, etc. So again, in this video, we're going to do Hyper-V. Uh, so I'm going to say Hyper-V. Now, it happens to be local host. Uh, so I'm going to click Next. Um, it's going to ask me for where the path of the virtual machine will be. So I'm going to put it in EVMs. And this was the issue that I was actually having before with permissions. I don't think that it could actually um, read the, the file system permissions. Uh, name BDR backup. Um, yeah, that's the VMDK. That's the virtual switch. It's Windows Generation 2 followed by Convert. That's it. There's nothing more for me to do. Brilliant. Eventually, sometime later, I will have a BDR backup virtual machine um, in our Hyper-V manager destination in the background here. And I can just basically click and power on. Now, I know people when they start using this are going to start saying, oh, well, it's slow. Well, all P to V, V to V type migrations are slow. You just have to be patient. But if we can get the live migration function actually working, then it doesn't really make any difference how long it actually basically takes because it'll do the first conversion of the disk and then later on it will do the synchronization to synchronize up the virtual machine. Uh, so it doesn't really make any difference how long it takes. Um, but certainly, you know, this is the Swiss army knife um, of P to V, V to V, software um, and it's free and um, you know as my grandfather um, god rest his soul to man and told me that nothing is free in life somebody's paying for it somewhere um, so starwind um, you're paying for it um, or the email addresses that you get from us um, is worthy of this particular product there's one thing there's one other you'll see at the end of the conversion there's one other thing that it does at the very end. It actually basically spawns up a browser and basically goes to um, a, a web page somewhere to sort of kind of advertise the, the products that Starwind do have. Um, so there you go. Um, I'm going to bob off uh, and we'll come back when the conversion has reached 100% and we'll power on the virtual machine in the lab and we'll go, Yee! all done. Brilliant. You know, you, you can't complain for free. Um, and I was actually maybe going to have a little look at some other third party products that are out there, you know, like I, I don't often, um, you know, products that we use here are VMware vSender Converter um, and this. We don't use other products uh, and we don't really sort of kind of get into the clickbait when you Google online PDV products. You know, there'll be there'll be there's probably 50 at least now. Um, and you download them and they sort of kind of say they're free, but they're, what they really mean is they're free to download and then later on you've got to go and pay a little bit of money. Um, and, um, you know, support's not very good. Uh, they don't work. Um, so, okay, I'm waffling. Uh, so I'm going to um, put this on pause and uh, we'll come back when it's done at 100%. I'm not going to bother basically capturing the, the sequence from 4% to 100% and speed it up in the lab. It's just a, it's just a waste of time. So anyway, I'll put this on pause. I'll come back at 100% and we'll, um, we'll summarise. So uh, catch you in a bit. So the conversion has finished and it's taken almost 60 minutes, just under 60 minutes uh, to convert a VMware vSphere uh, virtual machine running on vSXi 7.0.2 and uh, VMware vCenter server 7.0.2 as well. Um, so this is the, um, the web page that I was talking about uh, that once the conversion is finished 
um, basically the browser launches and you get this little bit of a uh, an advertisement. Anyway, so let's uh, minimise that and uh, let's have a little look at our Hyper-V manager. So as I was saying um, before the conversion, um, does all the heavy lifting for you as well. So there is no need to go into Hyper-V manager and create a new virtual machine and add the hard disk and select the specification of the virtual machine, that's all been done for you. Uh, in much the same way that VMware vSender Converter uh, creates a virtual machine on VMware vSphere. Um, you know, you may have to look at specifications and you may have to change the cores, the processors, the amount of memory, um, etc. But other than that, it's done. So all that we've got to do is say connect uh, or I could do right click start but anyway I'll just hit the power on button there and we'll just wait for that virtual machine to to spin up uh, now you know this is a hyper v lab machine um, you know this isn't something special um, that's um, involved in uh, production um, so it might be a little bit slow um, but it will show um, the general procedure um, works correctly. What probably could do with changing there is probably the um, the boot parameters, um, that uh, the boot order. A boot order in the virtual machine basically was expecting the boot from PXE first, so that probably needs changing in the boot order uh, to boot from uh, UEFI boot source first. So this is what we'd actually expect to see. Um, this is a Windows Server 2022 virtual machine, I think, and before when we actually basically looked at conversion specifications, it actually effectively said it was a UEFI boot, not legacy. Um, so all, all looking very good. Um, no blue screen of death at the moment. Um, so it continues to boot. As I said, you know, this isn't a production uh, hypervisor uh, host, Hyper-V host. Uh, but anyway, so we've got a login. Um, so I'm just actually going to basically select an action of Control-Alt-Delete. And that's what is incorrect. I think that was me typing on this non-familiar keyboard. There we go. Okay, so uh, in summary, um, if you're looking for a product uh, to convert from VMware vSphere uh, to migrate your virtual machines to the dark side, apologies, Microsoft Hyper-V. Uh, if, if you want to migrate your VMware vSphere virtual machines to Microsoft Hyper-V, then Starwin uh, V to V Converter or Starwin P to V Migrator will certainly do that for free. So that's all I wanted to demonstrate in this particular article. Um, and you can actually basically see it. Other than the VMware Tools Unrecoverable Error, and that's not really a surprise, really, to be honest, see that we're no longer running it on VMware vSphere anymore, ES6i. Uh, we are running on Hyper-V. Um, We've obviously got some networking, no networking, no internet access, but I don't think this machine's actually set up to access the internet. But we also saw the BDR suite server service actually basically start up there as well. Um, so that's all I wanted to show you in this video. Um, please watch out for more videos uh, on the use of Starwing Converter because uh, at the moment I have actually opened a dialogue up with them uh, because I definitely really actually want to see this live migration function working uh, between Hyper-V and VMware and uh, VMware vSphere and the dark side, Microsoft Hyper-V. Anyway, thanks so much for watching and uh, come back soon and watch out for those uh, new, newer videos, new up-to-date videos uh, on uh, Starwin uh, P2V Converter and doing live migrations from uh, VMware vSphere uh, to Microsoft Hyper-V. All the best now and thanks very much. Bye-bye.